And one of the hardest things in the world is to introduce someone to the real world that they've never seen because they've never lived in it. They've lived in a, a fictional construct inside their own head. They've been swimming in fictional delusions and belief systems and cultural narratives that simply aren't true. And yet they think that's reality. It's Cyber Monday, a day on the retail calendar that can be enjoyed from a desk or the couch. Enjoyed from a desk or a couch. Enjoyed from a desk or maybe the couch. Enjoyed from a desk or the couch. Enjoyed from a desk or the couch. Enjoyed from the desk or even the couch. Enjoyed from a desk or the couch. From a desk or a Waking people up is my most important mission. And what that means is teaching people to think for themselves and to quite literally question everything that they are told, uh, question every assumption, question every narrative, question every news report, question every statistic, every official government report, even question their own, their own senses. What you believe is, in many cases, not your own. It wasn't derived from inside your own mind. We as human beings are, are hardwired to take shortcuts in our decision making and those shortcuts include things like going with the crowd, following the herd. The social pressures that are brought to bear to manipulate your thinking and change your beliefs are so powerful that almost no one is immune to them. And what's especially fascinating about this is that even people who are with the herd think that they are not. So most people tell themselves that they are individual thinkers, that they have uh, rational thought and good cognition, but in reality, they've taken a shortcut to make a decision that goes along with the herd, along with the crowd, and then they backward justify that decision by telling themselves that they arrived at that decision through uh, conscious cognition and rational thought and good decision making when they didn't. They just took a shortcut. So if you look at all of these popular issues of, of our time, such as uh, politics, who you're voting for, or uh, cultural issues like, let's say, gay marriage or transgenderism or um, Black Lives Matter, anything like that, you find that, that most people go along with these things solely because there is tremendous social pressure to do so. Uh, climate change, for example, man-made climate change, global warming, uh, almost nobody who believes in global warming is a scientist, or certainly not a climatologist. Uh, they don't understand how to interpret data. They've never even seen any data. They've never seen raw satellite data feeds, uh, as I have, and so they, 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 they have no first-hand knowledge of how is the climate actually uh, changing or going through cycles or perhaps uh, not changing in certain ways. So they have, they have absolutely no knowledge of how to uh, um, ascertain whether climate change is in fact influenced by the behavior of, of burning fossil fuels. And yet they believe these things are real. Why? It's because they have been manipulated and in fact cognitively impregnated or brainwashed, you might say, by the social pressures of their peers. And these social pressures go along with very dedicated campaigns of shaming and vilifying and censoring those who do not conform to the obedient ideas of the, the current popular agenda. So uh, on this issue of climate change, or you could say uh, you know, Black Lives Matter, or you, you just pick your issue, it's all the same. Uh, if you don't go along with what is demanded, the, the narrative that is demanded of you, the socially approved narrative, then you are shamed, you are ridiculed, you're mocked. And this is actually one of the primary functions of the fake mainstream media today. The media is not in any way interested in reporting actual news. They have no, no interest in that. that. That doesn't pursue their agenda. It doesn't make them money. It doesn't get viewers to tune in. There's no interest in that. The real interest is in shaping the cultural narrative and reshaping the belief system of, of people. And one of the primary ways they do that is to mock those who do not go along with the current approved uh, demanded narratives of the politically correct elitists who are in fact writing the scripts for your brain. They're, they're writing the narratives, they, they invent them.
What's interesting is that uh, globalists or, or the, the social engineers, you might say, can pick any issue and any side of any issue and make it seem real. For example, you talk about, let's say, gun violence in America. Uh, a, a social engineer, let's say the Obama administration, working with CNN, can say, well, gun violence is worse and worse and worse, and there are hundreds of mass shootings every year in America, and they can, they can hammer this issue, and they can push this issue, and they can make it seem like it is uh, the absolute worst thing ever, like you're all going to be shot tomorrow if you don't um, immediately bow down and surrender to their demands for gun control. They can do that, and in some ways they have. But this exact same team, CNN and Obama or someone else, they could also choose the other side. And uh, suppose they just, they just pass some kind of um, enhanced background check, and now they want to take credit for that background check. They want to say that gun crime is down. Well, using the exact same statistics, they could then start pushing a narrative that says, well, gun crime is down and you're safer now because, because of this enhanced background check. Even if there, there's no statistical difference, they could then start running the, the news programs and have guests on and start pushing this angle. Everybody's safe now because of us. Uh, gun violence isn't happening. And they could even challenge you. Look around when you drive down the street. No one's shooting at you. See, it's, it's true. The evidence is right there. You see, they could cite that and they could paint the exact opposite story of the story that they painted, you know, six months earlier. You pick any issue, climate change. They could convince 99% of the people that climate change is going to destroy humanity. And they, but they could also flip it around and convince 99% of the people that climate change is, is a complete hoax. And this is, again, because most people have no ability to think for themselves. In reality, they've, their, their ideas and their beliefs have been injected into their heads by someone else, sometimes the news, sometimes an authority figure, sometimes a government, sometimes their peers. And then they, they then invoke an internal reverse justification to justify their decisions based on this false idea that they know what they're doing. If you have a room full of, of people, let's say you have 100 people in a room, if you ask individually each one of those people uh, whether they think that their intelligence is above average for the room, something like 75% of the people will say they're above average. And yet we know that's really impossible. You know, you, you can only have half the room that's average or above. Uh, the other half is obviously below average. <laughs> but uh, each individual would never realize that. And if you were to, to go around and ask people about their decision-making skills, uh, most people vastly overestimate their ability to to make good decisions, and uh, this. But this is an essential part of the wiring of human psychology. It is what allows people to go on through their lives making horrific decisions every day, and yet maintaining a sense of optimism that is, frankly, quite irrational.